Hey YouTube family, how are you guys doing? I hope you're all doing well. Summer's flying by and it's time to do another episode of you and me checking out gear in my basement. <laughs> Today's gear is a new guitar. It's a Tele style guitar with a Gibson scale -like. Mm hmm. I've been looking for one of these for a long time. I've always thought it would be cool to have a Telecaster with a Gibson scale length. I found this one. I've been looking at it and eyeballing it for a couple of years now. And um, they're really inexpensive. But the problem is, is they're in the USA. And for me here in Canada, um, there's exchange rates and duty fees and taxes that you have to pay. But the killer for me was the shipping. It was absolutely ridiculous. So I have family in the US that came home this week for a visit. So here it is, unbranded box. There's like nothing on this. Gotta open it up and see what we got. Got the cover off. What we have here is supposed to be a blonde-ish SL55 from Guitar Finish. So the Earl Slick models of Telecaster. Oh, we got some tools here. Truss rod wrench, a uh, little Allen key, probably for the bridge. And that's it, no manuals, no anything. No thank you note. <laughs> tilt back headstock. So this is one of the reasons why I bought this thing. Tilt back headstock, no string trees, and look at how every string is the same height. Right? And they are straight through the nut. There's no veering off through that nut. All these strings are perfectly straight to the tuners. Tuners have massive brass tuning pegs on them. Really cool. Um, they're not branded. Now you got the Slick logo. I'm not a big fan of the Slick logo. Woo! Look at this thing. All right, so this isn't as blonde as I hope. This is more yellow. Ah. It's all right. So, get you a closer look. So it's got these uh, GF Tron pickups in it. So they're kind of like a Filtertron, uh, Guitar Fetish's version of a Filtertron pickup, which I've never heard before and I've never seen in another guitar before. I've never used them. So uh, I guess there's some kind of a humbucker because um, there's you know two, two sets of poles and they're all screws so you can adjust the pole pieces, I guess. It's got this massive brass wraparound bridge and it's kind of cut into the body right here. So that's cool. Just a single switch with a big brass top. I think that's metal. Let me check. Maybe it's just plastic. We'll do a drop test right here. Yep, definitely metal. <laughs> this feels like a real toggle switch. One big brass knob. Oh, this. Volume pot feels really good. There's some resistance to it. Just a point and shoot guitar. One volume, three way switch. You know, typical input jack. Um, we'll do an under the hood in uh, part two. You know, even the screws are relic. They looked a little bit uh, rusty, but very basic, basic Telecaster. And uh, very porous. You can feel the wood grain. Fit and finish looks good. Frets. Have zero fret sprout, like none. Uh, frets are definitely going to need a polishing. They are pretty gray. Oh, uh, that's probably not showing up on the camera. But actually, I'm right under the light, and they're not—they're not really shiny. They're not reflecting light whatsoever. So yeah, they're pretty pretty rough. A little gritty. You can kind of hear them. The action's super high. <laughs> you know, it's pretty, it's pretty high off the fretboard. The nut is just, you know, this is kind of a square looking nut, it's not much taper to it. String alignment is off. There's way more spacing from the edge of the fretboard to the E string here than there is over here. The big E string is almost riding on the edge of this fretboard. That could be just a matter of loosening the neck screws and giving the neck a little tilt. However, you can already see a slight gap here between the body and the neck. So if I have to move the neck that way a little bit to get more clearance this way of the string, uh, that might not be too pretty. 
It's a two-piece maple neck. There is no skunk stripe on the back of this thing. So that means that the truss rod was inserted into the neck prior to the fretboard being glued on. And the neck is satin. There's like no finish on it. It's super nice. Love it. Nice and smooth. Feels really good, actually. Feels like a Slim C. It's not, not very chunky. Let's plug it in and just see if it works. See what kind of tones we get. I'm not really gonna be able to play it, guys. Um, I struggle on good days. <laughs> but uh, if you watch my previous videos, I busted my finger a couple of weeks ago. And then last week, infection set in. And uh, uh, look at that thing, man. That's disgusting. It's uh, all pussy and swollen at the bottom. You know, the cut seems to be healing, but I guess, you know, the doctor said there was something inside there that was kind of festering. So I'm on antibiotics. So I can't really bend. I can bend these fingers, but that's as far as I can go with this one. So it makes it a little hard to play. So anyway, I'll do what I can. Uh, we'll get some sounds anyway. We're just going to plug that in to that amp over there. That's just my little MV50 Vox. I got a small little pedal board on the floor and we'll see what these pickups sound like. So I just tuned it up. I had to pull on these strings quite a bit because man, it was going out of tune constantly. These are super cheap and super crappy strings. So if you get one of these, definitely change the strings out. I did check a few things just before turning the camera back on, but I did not correct anything other than just tune the guitar up. The tuners feel great, gotta say, no issues there. Um, there's way too much relief in this neck. The action is too high and the height at the nut is ridiculously high. So like if I fret the third fret and then I, you know, check at the first fret, there's a lot of string movement there. So those three things together make for a super high action, very uncomfortable, uh, to play probably the chord. And with this finger, it's, uh, not going to be great. Weight. Uh, feels good. I think I think they weigh in right around 7.5 if I remember correctly on the specs. The, the body, the edges are rounded. They're not like a, a really pronounced square edge. So although there's no forearm contour, which I prefer, it, uh, it, it feels good. Like it doesn't, uh, doesn't seem to dig in at all, which is nice. It feels kind of compact and I think it's just because of the 24 and 3 quarter inch scale length. Volume full and bridge pickup. the bridge being high, the neck having too much relief, and that not being high. Uh, I did check the intonation very quickly just with my tuner, and the intonation is totally off. It's not even close to being set. So... <laughs> They're very uh, telly esque. Can't play a D chord. I can't bend my finger. And this nut is poorly cut too. Um, you know, the strings are sitting right on the top of it, but it's clearly not deep enough and uh, it's, it's binding, you can tell. I don't know what this is, but uh, it's some kind of plastic composite. This is not a bone nut, uh, guaranteed. So maybe I'll, I might order a bone nut and replace that or a graph tech nut or something. <laughs> I hate when guitars go out of tune, man. Oh, they're all out. Anyway, whatever. All right, middle position. It's not a thin sound. It's kind of a nice, big, fat sound. It's pretty good. Have 
really good attack. <laughs> These pickups aren't set either. It's like a big tone. Alright. Uh, let's try a little bit of drive on that bridge pickup. Always going out of tune. Always. Even when you tune it, it's out of tune. <laughs> oh, it's, just, it's just terrible. I'm hoping that th this it's just a setup issue and not an improper placement of the bridge and the scale length is wrong. Uh, cause that would suck. Bad. So all these reviews that you guys watch and they, they unbox the guitars, tune them up and they play great right out of the box. I have trouble believing that nothing's been done. This guitar is out of the box is very cool, but terrible. <laughs> it's absolutely terrible. I'm not surprised. I'm not mad. I watched a few videos of this guitar and, and it's perfect. It's like uh, perfectly in tune, uh, intonated perfectly, uh, just it just plays well. Um, I just I just don't believe it. I'm sorry. I just don't believe it. I think this is a good guitar. I think it's well put together, um, solid, right? I don't see any major, you know, construction issues. Uh, however, uh, setup is terrible. <laughs> I'm just being honest, right? I don't have to impress anyone. I paid for this with my own money. Just the truth. Anyway, out of tune again. I haven't even played it all this time I was talking to you. The, the action is so high at the nut, it's, it doesn't help to have to push the strings down that much to get a chord because the string would be coming out of the nut and actually doing this, right? where your fingers depress. It's actually like you're sharpening the fretted strings and whereas the open strings are still open, no tension on them. And there's that much of a difference because it's that high at the nut. Right? It's crazy. Open string is tuned and then as soon as I hit one, it's out of tune, right? So the pitchiness is coming from the high action at the nut. So again, that's a guitar setup thing, right? Individual string sound, not too bad. But then when you hit a chord, what the heck is that? <laughs> it doesn't make sense. Anyway. guitar is quiet there's no noise no 60 cycle hum um, pretty sure that these come with shielded cavities but we'll definitely check on that when I do the teardown just wanted to do a quick unboxing quick sound demo and just to see how this guitar was out of the box I'm curious to see once we start taking it apart if the neck fits tight in the pocket you know if the pickup smooth free up and down the cavity if the cavities are shielded under the pickups or if it's just a control cavity back here that's shielded um anyway 
but I, it's just something about it that's really cool. So I hope I can set it up properly and it plays great because I have a couple of gigs this weekend and um, with this finger the way it is, it would be nice to have a short scale guitar. It would be a heck of a lot easier to play, I think, to get through these gigs. So stay tuned for part two, which will be called Under the Hood with the SL55. It is what it is. I think it's going to be a cool guitar. I'm looking forward to seeing what its full potential is. You guys take care. God bless. Let me know what you think. And keep rocking your six string. Doesn't matter what the name says on the headstock. If you like it, it's a good guitar.